This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Golden light melts away into the blue glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon lit shapes, a man and a woman on the single bed. A two-hearted spider. Like the witness said, the man is kneeling, the woman is on her back. It's the night of March 4th and a shot has just been fired. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth, a ray cast from somewhere outside, entering his brain. From the roof outside, location A prime, the glass fractures around the bullet hole, shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back. The man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions, all on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime, most likely of the origin points. There could have been, then the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This was more than a week ago. 72%, with an antique weapon that fires military grade ammunition. A Belmagrave rifle, for example. This is a good short distance, but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or possibly kneeling for precision. This would explain why it only took them one shot. The lights were on in here. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium. A well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness, too busy with their own bodies. Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire proposition void. These figures would be wiped out, detective. None that you've found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. That's a 28%, yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B prime. B prime for boardwalk, B double prime for land's end, and B triple prime for the islet detective. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. 700 meters away, the likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. 1.2 kilometers away, the least likely of these positions, let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it, possibly from a tent. No, too far-fetched. One kilometer away, a point beyond the docks, on an islet in the bay. The fort is ruined, but the perpetrator may have found a stable spot on the beaches surrounding it, where the concrete crumbles into the sea as you saw in the coin-operated viewer. The shot would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window between Rue de saint Gislaine 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme and access to the islets is questionable. From where precisely? I see you have given this a lot of thought. Are those the locations you've singled out in addition to the roof? And what is the likelihood, in your opinion, that it came from a further distance? Okay, well, we should see if there is gunshot residue or sniper nests if we go down the coast. Rule these spots out one by one. It would be the diligent thing to do. 
Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. It fits the hidden path through the whirling. A simple hypothesis. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, Boite de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West. Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega-hit. Don't worry, your pretty little head. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to the mix, because unlike Guillaume Le Million, you are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression, looking good on you or anyone. Two decades, if the calendar is to be trusted, Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. You have some understanding of the near history of disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. Still not happening. It won't come off that easy.
mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. Still not happening. It won't come off that easy. The theme on that pinball machine is a standard royalist theme, used on everything from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes. Clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. It comes free with a six pack of Vermilion Roy d'Or. The words Roy d'Or are stamped into the crown's plastic. The sentiment is called anti-centennial nostalgia, pining for a time before the turn of the century. It's common even now, after 50 years. Great news, the boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath it in a supine position. Sleeping, was it not decided that you're a hobo cop? More hobo than cop? Or was that fine irony that your visual cortex somehow misunderstood? Oh no, he's pretty much a bum now. Huh? Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at this moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. Think of it as a salvation. 
You have a home somewhere. All cops do. When this is done, you can return. Hi, officer. Anything I can help you with? You've graduated to Lowbringer now? Men with authority have their quirks. Comes with never being second-guessed about anything. So what brings you here, Lawbringer? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illicible. The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. The name is Lillian. People call me Netpicker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. Let's see. Who are you looking for? Uh, I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? Aha, like snowmen. Two odd guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Right, not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. You get the picture. Oh, you're getting it. And it is gorgeous. I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? Yeah, I'm not really looking for that anymore. Not much into the middle class ones either. Could do with some landed gentry, but apparently they don't make those anymore. I wish I could help you with that, but I haven't seen your working class husband. Maybe I can help you find someone else. She seems genuinely sorry for not being able to help you. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Are you? Hmm. This, what a nice idea. Wouldn't have thought that. She sounds incredulous about the niceness of the idea. That Everard and the Union have nice plans for anything. I thought they only cared about themselves. Well, I guess Union members have children too. And those members have a vote when electing the head of the local chapter. Aye, if you say so. Probably better that way. I mean, who likes construction noise? Mm-hmm. 
You're not sure about the melody, but it might be Saf Samaran, possibly Sigean, also known as the Apricot Sujunti. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. Then how does she know you're here? I still have a golden ear. Come, come. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Trouble? Say the second thing, Breton! Shows you got style! No, you're not. I've seen you around here before. Twelve years ago. You didn't raise any hell. You were quite helpful, actually. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. No, not you personally. I meant the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another, locked himself in that woodshed over there. He was brooding, needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place, somewhere more quiet. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black Hound. That's you, all right. A Black Hound licking your own heels. You're not. No one around here considers us an ill omen. People would have told us. Maybe they are afraid. Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone, searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me rambling. What brings you to us? Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Now it's your turn, Mr... Why, I guess I will hurry. Aye, it just rolls off the tongue. I used to know a Harry. Strong lad, but dumb as a rock. He did too many narcotics. So many, he fell off his boat and split his skull on a buoy. Folks who saw it say his head cracked open like a melon. Nasty, nasty. Eh? What's this about? Come now. I can't read all this scribble. Tell me what it says. Huh. I might be half blind, but it looks like part of the village is gonna be a street. The best part. The part we need to get out of our houses. Have you asked Lillian about this? I won't even consider signing till I know she's on board. Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. No one is using it, and God knows it's not much anyway. You can stay there. Oh, don't. It's your choice. No skin off my teeth. My kids grew up and left like they do. The house is long empty now. I live in the small side attachment. It's easier and cheaper to keep warm. I. The room is pretty bare bones, but it's got a bed and roof over it. That's more than some folks have around here. When Varson communist revolutionary Ignaz Nielsen was in hiding, 
He stayed in a hut on the Boreal Plateau for ten months. Any day now. I'm sure of it. Are you interested or not? Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. Well, if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. Here, in a shack. He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. Should he? This environment encourages one thing, and one thing only. Drinking. Finally, you have those lamos of Martinez off your back, Bratan. This looks like a great place to bring chicks. The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. has seen better days. I'll be sleeping in my room in the whirling. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. With a confident flourish, you complete your forgery. What do you see on the signature line? Indeed, they look distinctly different and very convincing. These might as well be their actual signatures, but they're not and the document will be nullified if they dispute it. That means Everard will have to start over. All you need to do now is mail the signatures to Everard's accountant in La Delta. There was a mail delivery box in the plaza near the corner of the bookstore.
wandering man. How can I help you? Los Ardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Everard's law. But really, they're just like you. Before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They could only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. Mr. Dubois, every worker. That's right, Mr. Dubois. I see the socialist democratic fervor now burns in your heart, too. How can I help you today? What? Did I? Well done then, Harry. I like not knowing about it, and I'm sure you made the right call. I spend the whole day delegating tasks, and it's a great relief to see people taking initiative. I don't even want to know what all of that means. Brew, shady, alcohol, turned off. I'm going to let the world surprise me. No, you didn't. <laughs> I know the mailman, Harry. I know everyone and everything that happens in this town, and I know there's no letter in that mailbox yet. Just like I know you'll get it done. Once you stop horsing around, let me know when it's done. By all means, Harry. What's on your mind?
you take the legal documents out of the envelope, a 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Underneath all this, on the signature line. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. Other than developing a personal relationship, looks like you were right. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail as collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slut ever on. You know he's going to play you somehow. There is a hollow ring as you kick the box. It sounds like it's mostly empty. Your toe hurts now. Your toe has suffered damage. It hurts. Mr. Dubois, I hear the meeting with Titus was a glowing success. That's such a relief. Titus can be a handful sometimes. Now, what can Everard Clare do for you today? The Golden Boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a real future, Harry, and proven yourself a real kingsman who's not afraid to make the tough decisions. I know I can trust you now. You're in my inner circle. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, nothing is off the table. Oh, Bratan, you play the old man like a three-string banjo. He has no idea. Better not to gloat, sire. It is arrogance that gives the play away. Be subtle. Harry, by now you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access makes some people consider moving, well, 
Let's just say there'll be freshly renovated buildings near the roundabout where those poor people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in quality of life. I'm talking real affordable workers' palaces. He proudly spreads his hands to demonstrate the size of the palaces. They're very large. You were there. You saw the place. A wasteland. There's nothing left. But mark my words, Harry. We are going to reset it. Reset. I have big plans for Martinez, and they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on the coast. That land will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. Harry, imagine a youth center supermarket church complex, employing hundreds, no, thousands of people. The coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turned into low-income housing. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago, for God's sake. It's time to move on. Yes, I do. I got the center, I got room for a retail complex, and in four years, I'll get the church too. The wheels are already turning, Harry. The wheels of progress. This post-war limbo, I won't stand for it. There are kids practically playing with their own feces out there. It cannot go on. There is true indignation in his voice when he speaks about the state of things, and even a touch of pain. The pain is true. He's seen kids do worse than that. But will there be giant statues of the Clare Brothers towering above it all? Joyce knew he was up to something. I'm not a symbolist, Harry. I'm a realist. My statue will be Martinez rebuilt. Five-story building complexes, workers on welfare, and landowners in Azon hating me. That will be my statue. And yours. We're doing this together. Damn right I am, Harry. I'm gonna make the working man as rich as she is one day. That's my job. Just like yours is to keep the peace. A true flash of anger in him, as he thinks of her. Order it. You know my men didn't kill him. They told you. It was a happy accident. You know how it is. No one takes the initiative. If I wanted him dead, I would have had to do it myself. And I'm too fat for that. Glad you asked. I've got type 2 diabetes because sugar and fat was all my mother had to give me and my brother Edgar when we were kids. Good job too, as it made me ugly. And ugly people, Harry, are much better at politics. That is true. People don't trust pretty people. Why a war, of course. Victory, Harry. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. I have. It's a great story, Harry. Did you also know how the bee colony kills the giant hornet? They swarm and blanket it entirely until it suffers a massive heat stroke and dies. He crosses his hands contently, thinking of the interior temperature of the wasp rising. Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1, and that's just Martin A's. With all the unions in Rebachol, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. Harry, there is no strike, only war. Class war. Or, in business terms, a dawn rain. Or wait. Is that when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. We're not gonna give nothing. We're gonna take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're gonna take all of it for the people, and fuck Wild Pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gormont go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her arsehole. She has no chance. 
Tits from her asshole. It's a local saying. Actually, no, it's not. Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. It's already happening. No idea. Could have been his own mother for all I know. If you ever find the guy, give him a big fat kiss from Everard Clare. Couldn't have done it without him. The guy, huh? I don't. I told you it could have been his own mother. I'm pretty sure it wasn't anyone from the Union. Maybe it was the mob. Or maybe he killed himself because he was a closet socialist. Truth is, I simply don't know. 2,372. Plus yours truly, of course. 2,373 is a sizable contingent for a labor organization in Revachon. Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The clients will ditch us. Harry, we've thought of everything. Clients would take a well-known multinational conglomerate over a local mobster any day. Sure, some will go, but mark my words. The company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martin A's and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs. Drug trade? Now you're being stupid, Harry. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samaran Isola. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities. The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad. Has bad optics. May be illegal in some countries. The Debardes Union, however, we're all about the large volume column. We're gonna transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. So your sick kid can get his benefit, and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off Risperazole. Benefit is a children's cold medicine, usually apricot flavored, and risperazole is used to treat severe psychosis. I'm an old fashioned guy, Harry. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share, and I'd keep that stuff far away from Martin A's. He's basically admitting to it. Harry, if I was supplying raw materials to drug manufacturers, I would need an army of rubies. Okay, so that's basically his system here. It's also far removed from my men and the people of Martin A's who've put their trust in me. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbour's turnover, just like the harbour is, but a small part of Martin A's. Let's look at the big picture. Martin A's as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth. And everyone's going to pull their weight. Harry, the length you're willing to go to keep your nose clean is remarkable. You will always have a warm bed in Mr. Clare's household, my friend, and a special place in the future of Martin A's. We're way past specific union members now. 
This is the big time. We're talking about the future of Revachol here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He loves to run his mouth on such matters. But I'm in big time mode, Harry. There's something different about him now. He's more vibrant, more alive in his big time mode. Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. Your gun is with an old woman. I hear she's a character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy. The one he described as terrifying. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway... Union Boy's gonna help you fix it. He winks at you. Don't worry, Harry. The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None of this does. As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the Pigs. There it is again. The Pigs. Like Roy said, not good at all. I already have. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. She will be there from 2200 hours till 0200 hours. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. I'm always happy to educate and entertain you, my friend. So, what's on your mind? Very nice, Harry. Is there anything else? 